Ireland is one of the most gorgeous and culturally rich places on earth. It has centuries of history, friendly people, great music, and much more. There's a reason why it's one of the most popular places on the planet to visit. So join us as Vucation presents the best things to do in Ireland, Cliffs of Moher and Sleeve League Cliffs. If you've seen photos of Ireland, the odds are decent at least one of them was the Cliffs of Moher. These incredible cliffs, located in County Clare, have become a symbol of the incredible and majestic nature of the Irish countryside. They span about 14 kilometers, and you can hike along them as you rise upwards towards the top. At certain points, you'll be 200 feet above the water below. You can get right up to the edge in certain places, so walk carefully. The cliffs are a sight to see as they tower over the ocean and provide a great viewpoint for the surrounding area. Check out O'Brien's Tower, the highest point at the cliffs. It's a short drive from the nearest town of Doolin. While the weather isn't always sunny, this is Ireland after all, when it's clear out you can see some notable landmarks from the top, including the Aran Islands and the Twelve Pins mountain range. If you're looking for cliffs just as majestic, but not nearly as touristy, check out Sleeve League Cliffs. They're located in County Donegal on the Atlantic coast. They're three times as high as the Cliffs of Moher and are actually some of the tallest in Europe. You'll be wowed at the sight of the ocean water, smashing against the rocks down below, and you'll get an incredible view of the surrounding area. Hit up some castles. You can't go to Ireland and not check out some of their legendary castles. They're scattered all over the country, so you might be able to find some a little less touristy if that's your goal. But the popular ones are great as well. And there are some you can actually stay in, like Ashford Castle in County Mayo. It's a castle built in 1228, but it's been converted into a modern and fun accommodation with fantastic amenities and service. But even if you're not looking to spend the night in an ancient castle, you can visit some of the many located all throughout Ireland. The most famous is Blarney Castle. It's a really cool castle for starters, and at the top is the famous Blarney Stone. The legend is, if you kiss it, you get the gift of gap, which is the Irish way of saying you'll be a great conversationalist. The kissing process is a little daunting because you have to be held up by an attendant as you bend over backwards to kiss it, but it certainly makes for a great photo op. And in case you're worried, especially in a COVID world, about kissing the same rock as thousands of people a day, they do sanitize it after each person. It might take a little of the allure away, but at least it's a lot safer. Then there's Dublin Castle, located in Dublin, of course. It makes for a really cool tour while you're in the capital. You can even see the state apartments inside it, which have been the location for presidential inaugurations. And the Rock of Cashel is a medieval-era castle in Tipperary, home to an incredible collection of medieval architecture and Celtic art. The Ring of Kerry While the east coast of Ireland has the capital, the west coast is perhaps the more gorgeous of the two. And the Ring of Kerry is perhaps the most famous area on the west coast. It's a picturesque drive that is quintessentially Irish. You can visit Killarney Park, as well as great attractions like Ruse Castle, Gap of Dunlow, Torque Waterfall, and the Stone Pillars. If you plan ahead, you might also be able to visit the famous Skellig Michael off the coast near the Ring of Kerry. It's a magical place that has an ancient monastery, craggy rocks, and nesting puffins. And if you've seen a couple of the recent Star Wars films, The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, then you'll remember it as the place where Luke Skywalker is living and hiding. Because of that, it's become a much more popular spot to visit. As such, you'll need to book well in advance, because there are only a few boats allowed to make the one-hour trip out to sea every day. So snag your spot at least three months in advance, if not longer. But if you make it there, it's pretty incredible. It's good to know the Ring of Kerry is a very popular place to visit, so it can get crowded in the summer months. But the views from it, as well as the bevy of fun local towns, make it a worthwhile trek. The Dingle Peninsula if you head slightly north from the Ring of Kerry, you'll hit up the Dingle Peninsula. It's actually the most westerly point in all of Europe. Not only does it offer incredible views of the ocean, but the town of Dingle is the epitome of a small Irish town. It has all the local flavor you'd ever want with tons of great restaurants, shops, and pubs that you can explore. It's a colorful and vibrant town, and it's likely you won't want to leave. The best way to explore the peninsula is to drive around it and check out the various cool spots along the way. You'll find great beaches, incredible views, and more. The trip around the entire peninsula should take you a full day, so plan accordingly. You can check out Killarney and Tralee, two other excellent towns in the area. Of note is the Slay Head Loop, which is a 30-mile loop within the peninsula that shouldn't be missed. It's worth mentioning that if you're planning to visit the Ring of Kerry, the Dingle Peninsula, and the Cliffs of Moher, the best way to do it is a drive up the coast along the Wild Atlantic Way. It's a 1,600-mile road that runs along the coast, providing some of the most breathtaking views you can imagine. 
There are technically 157 discovery points along it, so you won't be lacking options as you go. Galway and the Aran Islands While you're in the southwest of the island, head slightly north up the coast to the incredible city of Galway. It's a classic Irish town that'll impress you with its quaintness, vibrant culture, and views. Explore the Latin Quarter for some awesome shopping to go along with old-timey pubs. And the nightlife is quintessentially Irish, with traditional Irish music from live bands coming out of the windows of each street. You can explore the Galway City Museum for some education on the city and the area, and there are some excellent castle ruins along the river. The Galway Cathedral is a popular spot, especially for Catholic visitors. You can get Holy Communion there as you worship. But even if you're not Catholic, it's a lovely landmark that has incredible architectural design and Renaissance-style pillars underneath a prominent and beautiful dome. The interiors are majestic, featuring wall murals and cut stone carvings. If the weather is nice, another fantastic way to spend the day is to take a boat out from Galway City to the Aran Islands. They're only a quick ferry ride away, and they make for a really cool day trip. The three islands are called Innis Or, Innis Mian, and Innis Moor, and they each boast a ton of authentic Irish culture. In fact, you might hear more people on the islands speaking traditional Irish than English. There are incredible ruins to see there, some great little restaurants and pubs, and excellent views out onto the ocean. And be sure to visit Innes Mian Knitting Company to pick up one of their legendary Aran sweaters. After all, it's Ireland, so it's bound to get pretty brisk at some point on your trip, unless it's the dead of summer. Giant's Causeway Technically, Giant's Causeway is in Northern Ireland, so you'd have to drive up north and cross the border to see it. But it's such an incredible display of nature, it's absolutely worth it. The causeway is unlike anything you've ever seen. It's a stretch of the Northern Irish coastline that has naturally developed thousands of hexagonal columns. It's a bizarre and fascinating element of nature you'll be amazed at. And it'll definitely make your social media content unlike most other people's. So that's a nice little bonus. Of course, you'll probably already be populating it with loads of pictures from all over the Emerald Isle, which means it'll be popping for days. Plus, the trip up north could also give you a chance to visit some of the incredible places in Northern Ireland, like Derry and Belfast. But perhaps those will be in a separate video about Northern Ireland. Now it's time to hear from you. Have you ever been to Ireland? Did we miss any of your favorite attractions? If not, do you think you'll ever get there? Let us know in the comments section below.